What's up guys, welcome to Voicey here, this is your host, Captain Zack, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright, this story is called, Karen Threatens to Run Me Over. Here's the cast. Entitled Kid, uh, there are multiple and will be numbered. Entitled Mother. Entitled Bench or a Mother. Allie. Assisting Employee. Me. Well, me. Hey, so here's a little bit of a backstory. We had our usual group of six kids, age range from 12 to 16, who come in every weekend and cause problems in the theater, i.e. be on their phones at the front of the theater with brightness at a thousand percent, listening to music or TikToks, yelling at each other, running, or fist fighting. We call them Friday Kids. This has gone on for the last three plus years I've been here, and ever since I've gotten promoted to management, I've really started cracking down. The old managers used to just let it go and not worry at all, but as color staff, I had to deal with the uproar that they caused, so I don't want my employees to deal with that. It's just not fair to other people or the employees. I've gotten to the point where I would give them a single firm warning and then have to escort them out. They still weren't getting the pictures, so I've gotten rid of their warning privilege and just resorted to kicking them out. Three years, they know the rules. Anyways, I digress. So that brings us to today. It's opening weekend for Birds of Prey, and they are trying to get in. Is Birds of Prey out today? Well, yes, but seeing as none of you are 17 plus, I can't legally let you in. I'm sorry, guys. That's crap. Give me like six tickets. Entitled kid, I'm your neighbor, and I know you're only 12. Racist bench. Excuse me? What's going on? They want to see Birds of Prey? No, I'm sorry, but you have to be at least 17, and I know that the oldest one of y'all is 16. I'm 17. Do you have a school ID so I can verify that? Why the frick would I show you? Then no. This went on for at least 15 minutes, and eventually we got them to settle on Gretel and Hansel. This was to my dismay, because that movie is still relatively new, and I knew it was very busy all day, and I did not want to deal with dragging them out again. Hey, Allie, uh, can you go on door and make sure that the Friday kids don't jump into Birds of Prey, and let me know if we get a complaint from Auditorium 4 pertaining to them? Sure, no problem. Thanks. I'm gonna be in my office, so I have to set up the shows for next week. Not 20 minutes go by, and Allie is in my doorway asking for my help with the Friday kids, we have had four complaints and the kids were yelling at each other saying some pretty obscene things that you wouldn't expect from a young group of kids. I.e. shut the frick up you little n-word. How about you shut your legs fish fat. Oh god. Like I said, obscene. Sorry, just had to show you what I meant. I don't like typing things like that, let alone hearing that some kids are yelling that over a relatively small, quiet movie. I walk in and just like clockwork, I see the phones waving and the terrible conversations and kids jumping over the several thousand dollar chairs. I'm gonna need help. Hey, Allie, can you give me a hand? This is gonna be a fun one. That bad today? Oh yeah. We walk in and give them all the usual, Hey guys, you gotta leave, we've talked about this last week, you can't be doing that here, spiel that they get every week. What the frick did you just say to me? Hey, get out, I'm trying to be polite about it, but I won't have you talking to me that way. Entitled Kids 2 through 6 start saying that it wasn't their fault, and that they were being framed by someone in the auditorium. Reminder, I caught them red-handed. You guys heard him, grab your things and follow us out. Begrudgingly, we get entitled kids 1 through 5 to get up and out to the lobby where I was going to give them the talk about how they can't keep acting like this because it's not polite to the other patrons. When I notice entitled kid 6 take off her shoes and socks and sink further into her chair. At this point, I've had enough of this and called my general manager to see what I'm allowed to do in a situation where a person refuses to leave to make sure I was in the right. So I did what he instructed. Hey, entitled kid 6. What do you want, skinny cracker bench? Well, that was uncalled for. I asked you to leave. I'm sorry if you weren't directly to blame, but you can't stay if you're part of that group, which I know you are. Make me. Okay, get up and follow me, or I have to call the police for trespassing. Jeez, fine, no need to cause a scene. You've already done that. Once I get out of the theater with Entitled Kid 6 and Ally, Entitled Kid 1 comes up to me with his cell phone. My mom wants to talk to you. No problem. Hello, OP speaking. Why the frick did you kick my baby and his friends out? Well, I kicked them out because they were being disrupt. 
Bull crap, my baby is respectful as frick, and you guys are just racist. Ma'am, I, I don't care about that type of stuff. I kicked them out because I have had several complaints, and now because they've made such a scene in the auditorium, I have to give emergency passes to the entire theater. This happens every frickin' week, you're targeting my kids. Ma'am, I'm not targeting your children. It's just, with a track record like they've made, it's just become a recurring issue. I'm sorry, but they clearly don't know how to behave in this type of environment. Are you calling me a bad mother? I assure you, ma'am, I don't mean that. It's just that I feel that they shouldn't be swearing and fighting in my theater. It's just not fair to the other guests. That's it, I'm coming down there and crashing through your entrance and hitting you with my car. See how you like us then. Last year, I got into a very bad car accident that has fractured and dust aligned my spine. I'm still healing from that, and her saying this triggers a bit of my PTSD. Excuse me, ma'am? I don't believe you mean that, and if you do, I'm gonna have to report it as a threat to not only the theater, but to your children, myself, and employees. Yes, I did freaking mean it, you goddamn cracker, mother fricker. I write down the phone number, and when I calm down, I prepared an incident report. Well, ma'am, if you want to be like that, your children will be waiting near the entrance and are no longer welcome back in this establishment as long as I am here. Fine, be like that. I'll be in in 20 minutes to kick your ass. See you then. I hang up the phone and give it back to the kid. What did she say? She's gonna run me over with her car and you guys are never coming back here. Now, get out of my theater. I have no more patience for you guys today. Where will we go? See those doors right there? There's another set that leads outside that you can wait for your mother to show up. It's heated in there, so it won't be too cold. That's illegal! No, it's not. I'm officially done dealing with you. Go! As you can tell at this point, I was not very happy. I tried to keep my cool and didn't raise my voice, but I was done with the shenanigans. Two and a half hours later, Entitled Blup Mother finally shows up to get her kids, and one of the kids come back in, saying that his mom wanted to talk to me. Is she in the car? Yeah! Me being 100% done with this, I say, tell her I said nice try. My general manager at this point has to come in to see what the hell was going on and was standing next to me when I said that. Why didn't you give her the number? I'm not endangering myself to hand out a piece of paper so someone can yell lies to my superiors. Sounds fair. Just curious, was I in the wrong here? What would you have done in my situation? Uh, honestly, me personally, I would go outside, and if she tries to floor it, I'd just kind of, you know, dive diagonally towards her direction, sort of. Um, not directly towards her, but like, you know, slightly to the side. So, um, you know, I'm impossible to hit, and if she damages someone or something, that's on her. And you look like a badass. This story's called, Entitled Kid Kicks My Instrument Out of My Hands and Their Entitled Parent Gets Mad at Me and My Mom. I don't know if this story belongs here, though there is an entitled parent that plays a part in the story. This story took place last November in orchestra class during our preparation for our upcoming camber concert. A camber concert is something my orchestra teacher came up with. It's basically a group project, but in an orchestra, and we are expected to get a piece of music ready for a concert. This was one of those stupid projects where we were allowed to pick who was in our camber group, because leaving a whole bunch of stupid high schoolers unsupervised with their friends along with fragile wood orchestra instruments is definitely a very good idea. Now to what happened. On this day, by the time 6th period came around, my teacher had to leave the school due to one of his kids getting sick. Now, when he left, there was a slight problem. There was no substitute teacher, so he basically left a whole bunch of teenagers unsupervised and expected us not to cause a huge fight and act like chickens with their heads cut off. This was a huge mistake, because in my group, there was one of those crazy kids with half a brain cell, also known as the Entitled Kid. The Entitled Kid's girlfriend, she doesn't take part in this, and this really awesome guy, he also doesn't take part in this. One thing to know about this Entitled Kid is that he loved to annoy and cause conflict with others in the group, mostly with his girlfriend. So with this hard group that I was dragged into was my friend, Entitled Kid's girlfriend. Let the dookie tornado begin. Now, Entitled Kid would cause more conflict than actually play during the rehearsal. Now, on this particular day, I was already fed up with this kid's BS, with this being a few days to a week after we started getting in groups, after we picked our piece to play and he had already succeeded with getting on my nerves. With him getting on my nerves so often for his laziness, I was beyond livid with this very special human being. 
The Entitled Kid refused to rehearse on this day, and I said something along the lines of, Put up your crappy instrument and play. In this moment, he lifted his long-ass legs and somehow hit the scroll of my instrument. With the force of the kick, he managed to knock my violin out of my hand, causing the chin rest to smack me in the jaw. The instrument did a whole 180 degree spin in the air and fell from standing height bridge first on the floor. I'm so glad that Victor, my violin's name, didn't break because this was a brand new instrument and was a step up from a student violin. I just stood there for a while trying to process what just happened. I angrily grabbed my instrument and tuned it back up and gloriously flipped off everyone in my group. Fast forward. My mom eventually found out what the entitled kid did and decided to message my teacher after a long conversation with my therapist and family about what to do. My teacher contacts the parents of the entitled kid and the email they sent my mom made me furious. So when the entitled parent asked the kids what happened when he kicked the instrument and I'm not even kidding, he told his dad, I believe, that I was the one not rehearsing along with saying that I was sitting on the floor that he was swinging his leg around, and when my instrument fell, it landed perfectly in my case. This kid actually lied. Like, if you just told the truth, then I wouldn't have absolutely hated your guts and would have forgiven you. So when the parents emailed this to the teacher, they acted like it was my fault, and they blamed the entitled kid's boredom for why he kicked the instrument. Like, what the heck? This is like saying that if your kid broke an entire TV out of being bored, it still doesn't make it okay or make your argument make any sense whatsoever. They also said that the teacher should have been more worried about me supposedly being on the floor than the instrument being kicked out of my hand. Like, again, what the heck? This doesn't even make any sense. I actually felt bad for snitching on him and having him get a referral. But after this, I couldn't care less about when this kid's punishment was. Sadly, after that email, my teacher dropped the whole situation and just left it at the referral, which is probably for the best because if this continues, it could have gotten ugly really quick. The entitled parent acted like we were asking for a brand new instrument even though my mom never said that in her email. This wasn't the first time I've been in contact with a Karen, but it probably won't be the last, sadly. At least my teacher got a substitute the next time he wasn't there, so that's good. If I'm being honest, I've had my share of bad group projects, but never in my life have I had such an absolute hell on earth crap storm of a project like this one. I'm sorry this was really long and kind of dragged. The takeaway is don't ever leave your students without a substitute because it doesn't end well. Also, I don't hate this kid, even though it may seem like I hate him. Me and the kids are actually on good terms. I just hate what he did. I'm honestly kind of mad that the room we were in didn't have a security camera in it because it was really small. I don't think there will be any updates. Yo, I can understand being really upset about this because violins are insanely expensive. Like, I believe, I don't know the anatomy of a violin, but I know that they aren't cheap. And I know that the, I think they're called the, the bow, like the stick thing that you use to strum the strings. <laughs> Those can cost hundreds of dollars, I believe. And yeah, they just aren't cheap instruments. And they're also like insanely hard to learn, but you know, that's obvious. But yeah, don't leave kids unsupervised like that. I mean, in my in my case, uh, we were often left alone in wood shop because the teacher there really he trusted us a lot, and we appreciated that. And everyone loved wood shop, so we took the class seriously. I mean, sure we had fun, and there was a lot of people goofing off at times. However, it wasn't ever out of hands. Like he would let us go to the restroom without permission, go get water without permission. And he was cool with it, mostly because I, he probably just didn't want the responsibility because he had a lot of other stuff to do. But, you know, we all listened. We all did a good job. It was a great class. But it was a small school and everyone knew each other. Everyone was friends with each other. So um, it could be different in other people's cases. It most definitely is. This story's called, She Threatened to Break My Leg Because I Told Her Daughter I Wasn't Disabled. So here's a quick rundown. I have restless leg syndrome. Basically, when I'm calm or sitting down, one of my legs bounces and I don't have control over it. Basically, I was sat at Macy's with a couple of friends eating my nuggets with sweet curry sauce, it's the best sauce, and my legs started bouncing. My mates pointed out and I'm just like, yeah, it happens all the time. I can't help it, but it'll ease down in a bit. So we kept eating. This woman, entitled mother, and her daughter, entitled daughter, come in and start going on about what they're gonna wear to a party on Saturday. This happened on Tuesday. 
and we pay them no mind. The leg bouncing has gotten worse, and you can hear and obviously see it. They order food and sit right next to us, in an almost empty McDonald's. One of the lads goes to get us all hot chocolate, and I give him a couple of those free drink things you collect. Entitled Daughter comes up to the group and asks if we can move because she has to do some planning for an upcoming party. We politely say no and keep eating. She starts huffing and goes, You and your R-word friend move. Now. We all know that I was the R-word friend, so I kind of just quietly said, I'm not mentally or physically disabled, it's just that I have a low iron level and can't help it. And she just huffed again and left. A few minutes later, Entitled Mother slid towards us. How dare you lie to my precious baby girl, telling her you're normal? We all just stay quiet for a couple of seconds and she continued. You're lying to a little girl, she looked about 14, about how you bounce your leg because of a low iron level and that's BS. Actually, there's a lot of cut. She cut me off. I don't care what a spastic like you has to say. Now apologize to my daughter for being a lion bench or I'll break that leg of yours. She just kind of stood there, waiting and tapping her foot. Because of this, one of my mates, the one who got hot chocolate, said, Oh my god, look her legs bouncing. OP, you passed it on, you're free. So we all just start laughing and got up to leave. She would have followed us out, but I think she was in shock from getting shown up. <laughs> That's a good friend. The best thing you can do with these types of people is to just not take them seriously. <laughs> because if you take them seriously, that's feeding into this stupid superiority that they feel over you for absolutely no reason. But if you mock them and make them feel stupid, you win. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.